Hello again, everyone. This is Joe. And in this weekend update, uh, we're going to take a look at the market action for yesterday and then try to determine. We're going to look at the NASDAQ and the Dow Industrials and see, is this the 2000 top or is it more similar to the 2007 top? And just see what is going on right now. So stay tuned. OK, so let's dive in here. The Dow is up big, up 440 points on Friday. Big move on Friday. And uh, you can see it was just up really strong for the entire week. Uh, Monday and Friday were the big moves. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday really didn't do hardly anything in between in here. And it's really interesting. I think it was Wednesday night when the Gary Cohen news broke. And uh, at one point, the Dow futures were down like 450 points. And then the market really didn't do anything. Uh, it, it gapped. It went all the way down and it came back and really wasn't down very far. So uh, it might have been, maybe I got the nights wrong. I think it was Wednesday night or, or Tuesday night or Wednesday night. But all I know is the middle of the week and I remember watching it live. So anyway, right now, well, I've still got this wave count. I still consider this the primary wave count. Uh, Minute Wave 1 down, 2 back, and, and then uh, sub-minuet uh, or minuet level 1 down. So really what I'm talking about is I'm assuming that we are moving 1, 2, 1, 2, and moving our way down. That's what I'm watching for until this market proves me wrong. Now, the NASDAQ has proven that it wants to continue to extend, and we're going to take a look at that. Let's do that right now. Let's take a look at the uh, NASDAQ composite. And you could see this has it came back strong, and then we thought we were getting the, the move to the downside, and then no, we've come back and pushed to a new high. So uh, there is no way that a five-wave impulse could be a complete here. So uh, we are looking for this to, to you know possibly continue pushing higher. Uh, so we'll watch and see what happens. But when we look at the comparison between what's going on now and, and the previous tops and then look at the weekly charts, some interesting dynamics happening in here that uh, really kind of sit back and make you kind of say, hmm, what is going on? Let's take a look. I want to look at uh, one of my indicators and I realize I don't have it up. Let me pull it up. Okay, the McClellan Oscillator, and we are now in extremely overbought territory. So we're at like uh, plus 50, 159, almost 160 reading in here. Uh, this is the highest reading. It, it is higher than anything we had in that January, December high, higher than anything back in the middle of the year. Matter of fact, it's higher than anything we had all of last year. So this bounce back has come back very strong, and now we are extremely overbought. Anything over plus 150 uh, is extremely overbought. Anything below minus 150 is extremely oversold. So you can see how we got down there with that, uh, that whole sell-off that happened from January 26th to February 9th. And then we've rallied back and, and got this move up here. So now, you know, that's got, the, got my attention because we're extremely overbought. We're very high on uh, on a lot of the uh, the indices, and uh, watching to see now if we're going to get uh, the watching the price action to see if we're going to turn over. Okay, now I want to look at the Dow Jones daily and the Nasdaq daily on a side by side comparison. Okay, here's the chart I want, and uh, this is a comparison. So basically, this is a line chart. So we're talking about closes in here. The red line is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The blue line is the NASDAQ composite. OK, so this is the 2000 top. This is January 14th of 2000. And you can see that's when the Dow Jones Industrial Average topped. And then it just sold off very strong, very quickly. But at the same time, the NASDAQ composite continued to push to the upside and didn't peak until when? March 9th. OK, so it was like eight weeks later that they had between the peaks. And then it started to sell off and broke down also. The NASDAQ composite uh, index, or the, uh, the scale is to the left. The Dow is to the right. OK, now let's take a quick move over to the 2007 top. And we're going to see that 2007, we got a similar type of activity here. The Dow peaked on October 9th. The NASDAQ didn't peak to October 31st. Now, that was only 22 days apart, as opposed to in 2000, it was eight weeks apart. But we still got some divergence going on uh, in here. So what have we got going on right now? 
Well, it's to be determined whether that, you know, where is the NASDAQ going to stop? Where is it going to turn down? That's why I've got a question mark. They both peaked on January 26th, but the Dow has definitely been a laggard. And, you know, it's looking like, you know, it's kind of holding back a little bit. It'll be interesting to see, does it continue to push? That's why I've got a little question mark in here. This is just, we're looking to see is a similar type scenario developing to what we got at the two previous uh, major tops, okay? That's what we're looking at. This is kind of a big flag, you know, waving in your face going, hello, you might want to pay attention. Okay, so now the next thing I want to look at is the NASDAQ uh, weekly chart. Okay, here's a couple of really interesting, several interesting things going on. Number one, okay, so here we are up here at the top today, okay? Two of the last three major turning points on the NASDAQ Composite Weekly occurred in March. Back down here at the bottom in 2009, it was March 6th, week ending March 6th. And then we just talked about the top in 2000, the week ending March 10th, okay? Two out of three. And here we are, March 9th. Friday was March 9th. So that's the first interesting thing. And then the other thing that we're going to point out as we look at, and I'll have to zoom in, we are getting bearish divergence. You got bearish divergence at that top on the RSI. You, you got the bullish divergence down over here when it turned. You got it down here at this bottom. And we're getting it now. Now, again, we got to see it start to turn down. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that with a little more uh, clarity. This is what we're talking about. Okay, this is how it looks on the weekly chart. So this has definitely got my attention also. The other thing I want to point out is that uh, two out of three channels are coming are coming together right here at this point. I'm about to lose my voice in here. I had to get some water. So we got this really strong upward trending channel of the bull move from March 2009. So that channel's up here. We're at the top of the channel. And here we are. What I did was I took a, a trend line between these two lows, made an exact parallel of that line, and put it up to the top of here, and it projects right over here. Okay, that's how we got this. So we got this big channel that this is in right now. So two through two channels, uh, the stock, uh, the Nasdaq Composite Weekly is right at the top of. Okay, plus we're getting some divergence, so it's going to be really interesting to watch and see how does this play itself out. All right, the last thing I want to mention is the semiconductors, which continue to push very strongly. This is a daily chart. Yes, they closed at their high for the up $2.12 for the day uh, at 111.93. So the, the uh, semiconductors are the strongest market sector in the S&P. And they've continued to come back strong. But this is the pattern that you need to be aware of and watch out for. OK, this is what we call a broadening top. Some people call it a mega, megaphone. Uh, I call it a broadening top. We are at the fifth point. Typically, what I'm watching for now is a price to turn back down and watching to see if this starts to break down from here. So we're in that zone where, you know, definitely uh, watching for that type of price action. OK, that's it for this weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscriber button so you get notifications of when new videos are coming out. And uh, remember to share the video with uh, other folks, your friends, and uh, those on uh, social media. So everyone have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.